porn. Yeah. Because of all the problems, you know, with alcoholism and the religion, Mm -hmm. when I was a little kid, probably about nine or 10, I fell into my uncle's porn stash. Mm -hmm. I'll never forget discovering it. Back then it it. was a stash. It It was was in a box. stash. And my life changed forever. I mean, you know, there were only a few times when all my problems went away. A couple. One was Carol Burnett and the other was porn. And back then, you had porn in a grocery store. Mm-hmm. You could literally see Wii, Player, Playboy. It was right there up with the milk and cheese was on the one aisle. And that was just the thing. They were like, yeah. and I remember going into the store to get some stuff and my mother sending me in and, and I did not leave. And she was like, she came in like, what are you doing? And I was sitting there at the magazine rack with a Playboy and I just could not move. Um, and then I came up in the era of, you know, first days of cable when Playboy Channel, yep. Escapade Channel, this kind of thing. And then, Escapade, that's a deep cut. You remember that? <laughs> I'm course. going way back. For, yeah. uh, <laughs> and then and then it was so weird because they were all based on like. You ever jerk off to a scrambled? Yeah. <laughs> to a scrambled Playboy? No, but let me tell you, this is the thing about the scramble. I knew how to de-scramble. Of course you did. You you just hold the channel in between and it would come in clear as day. Well, when you're addicted to porn, Terry, that's you'll find ways around the system. That's what you do. <laughs> that's what you do. Dude, and it's in the house. Yeah. And it was something I ran to because again, I wasn't allowed to do anything else. So when my parents were gone and doing whatever, I would be in there watching porn. And um because my brother and I would be watching together for a while, and he'd be like, "Man, I'm not doing this anymore. I don't need that." And I was like, "You go ahead. I'm uh, see you later. I need it." And you're just watching it. I was, you're I just transfixed. It. You're I'm, not masturbating. You're just all, transfixed. You, got, you gotta understand. I was so young at first, and my mother being so religious, we never talked about my mother and her father. Uh, to this day, I've never had a, a talk with my with, with my dad about sex. Oh, my you mother should. was like. I would say, so what about sex? And she'd be like, don't talk about sex unless you, you, are you doing it? Are you doing sex? I'm like, no, no, I'm not, I'm not. And I hated to bring it up, right? Because it was always comes with shame. So I tried to act like I wasn't ever thinking about sex. Because my mother was like, you're gonna get somebody pregnant, you're gonna, and because she ended up pregnant at 16. Mm-hmm. So it was something we just never talked about in our house. So I never forget the first time I did jack off. It was like, what is going on? And I had to be around 13, cause I, but I had been watching porn and different things since I was eight. So I didn't even know this this little gift like, that kept on giving. Is that what this was about the whole time? <laughs> I was going, this is the gift that keeps on giving. Cause yeah. Oh my God. And then it was. It so was, it's, a, it's a way to escape. Yeah. And then, and then add an orgasm to that. It's yeah. like the frequent, it, sex is a, frequency that can like is very hypnotizing and oh yeah uh, in arguably the strongest frequent uh, hypnotic frequency on earth right yeah and then you so you use that to escape from a from a bad place like yeah. where you lived emotionally yeah and then you rely on it for the rest of your it. i mean you gotta i didn't even i was avert i hadn't even had sex until i went it was my second year in college so I was a virgin the whole time through high school. Because you just didn't, it didn't occur to you because you had so much porn at home. I mean, it, it, well, this is the thing. I, I, I wasn't allowed to have girlfriends either. Oh, so all this right. Was a, do that was another thing. Yeah. But she, because again, you're going to get somebody pregnant. So there was a, a, a huge, it just became a problem, man. Like, and when I say a problem, I thought getting married was going to end it. Like, I got married the day before my 21st birthday. Me and my wife have been married 34 years. And I thought, oh man, you know, when I get married, I got a real woman. Now I'll never need porn again. And then we got in an argument, and I was like, I need porn. Mm. And that hit me. I was like, oh shit. Did you realize immediately, like, uh oh? Yep. Yep. I mean, immediately. Because we got in an argument, and I was going, oh, now I need porn. Because, uh oh. So you had to call your uncle, find yeah. a stash? <laughs> So okay, so then you realize, but that's twenty yeah. years before you do anything about it, right? Right, uh, dude. 
this this is why it's so bad because I would even and this was really affect me even as I started acting in football and the whole thing. I had this whole secret life where I would keep my porn. You got to cut myself. from two teams for masturbating too much. Uh, no, no that that never happened. You okay. might be on my Wikipedia, but no, <laughs> that did not happen. <laughs> uh, but what did happen is remember I was going through this major imposter syndrome thing when I get I got my first movie, and. I was, my first movie is a big Arnold Schwarzenegger flick. I'm one of the bad guys. It's called The Sixth Day. I'm in Vancouver. It was so bad. The posture syndrome was so bad that they were like, you know, Terry, you're not going to shoot for three weeks. We want to send you home. We can send you back to LA. I was like, no, 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 no. I'll stay. No, I'll stay. It's okay. No, you don't ever have to send me. I'm thinking like they're going to cut me. Yeah. Just like I'm yeah. NFL. And I stay in the room for three damn weeks when I could have went Sutton home. Sutton Place. Vancouver? The Sutton Place, the Sutton Place mm. Hotel, mm. Vancouver, mm. dude. Mm. Oh my God, mm. you know it. Mm. Hey man, crazy. And this was like 1999, this is around then, or, you know, early 2000s. And I'm going, and I'm watching all the porn on the show, on the set, the whole thing, dude. And then finally, I, I tell myself, I'm going, just going to get a massage to kind of work out the kinks and been working out a lot, you know. But knowing full well, I wanted to try out something and i went to this massage place and got a hand job and i was like oh lord i officially i had never went so you never cheated i had never cheated and that was the moment i cheated and i was like oh man it changed everything and i knew i said i will never ever tell like this is the secret that i'm gonna die with um, I just knew, and I, I felt so horrible. I mean, and my wife was, something's up, what, what, what's going on? Like, what, and I'm, uh, 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 you know, and I just knew, I just was praying she didn't see it on me. What was it about that day, you think, that made you? I don't know. I I, I mean, just the loneliness, being up there the whole time, the, and feeling like I didn't belong. Because, again, I, I was not an actor. I yeah. I was like, I didn't know what to do with the crew and the people, and they were doing their things. I was like, uh, Michael Rooker was the guy who actually taught me how to act. He was like, no, daddy, what you gotta do, man? When I'm standing here, you stand over here. That's what a, we gonna do -si do in the scene, right? And I'm going, okay, okay. Dude, I was scared shitless the whole time, thinking they're gonna fire me, they're gonna discover that I don't know what I'm doing. I'm an old football player, and I just, every line came out like, you know, it's funny, me and Dave Batista talked about this. Like, the first time we ever acted, it was just like, the line's coming, line's coming, here's the line, time to say the line, say the line, hi. Yeah. <laughs> and the line yep. there. You know, that kind of anxiety, that was the whole movie. And, uh, and how I would unwind was pornography. But I need it more. And you gotta understand, it's the gift that does not, it's, it's, I have a it's very diminishing gross, returns. A gross question. <laughs> okay. How many times a day were you masturbating on average? Oh, I don't remember. I don't remember, Think, but it had Perry, to be. This is important. I'm getting... Yeah, man, but I, I could tell you this. I could. I was watching from day, if day turned into night. So it would be like 11 a.m. all the way to like, 11 p.m. Was it about the orgasm or was it just about like the trance? Yeah, a trance. You're in a trance. You're in a trance. It's like you're you're instantly out of body. It's like you're nowhere. Did your wife know that it was an issue before? Like, was it, would you go like, I'm going to my office. I need quiet. And we're she like, caught me a couple times. Yeah. And I was like, oh, no, I won't do this. You know. I, <laughs> what is this? Yeah. I was like, oh, uh, no, you know. And but, but see, but this was a while because I went through the whole changes, like you know, with, with cable and then, then the internet. Yeah. And then see, it got easier. Yeah. Like, you don't got to go to the to store, hide. Terry. You don't have to go behind the beaded into the beaded room. No, you right. You don't have to go to a bookstore. You don't have to do this stuff. And it was just going, and because that's what I would do before. Is like, oh man, you know, feel bad and go home and you don't have anything in the, the house. Place. And, you know, yeah. yeah. <laughs> And then every hotel had mm -hmm. something, you know. And I was like, but I hid that for years. And then my wife finally, finally, she was like, Terry, 
what is it I don't know about you? And I got tired. And we were arguing a lot. I kind of felt like we were going to break up anyway because it, it became this thing. Where this stuff gets too hard to hide. And I felt like... You, you also do, resent them for because you have to hide it, so you resent resentment, them. Resentment, yeah, exactly. I, I was always angry at her. At her. And she was because the she, Why won't you let me masturbate 12 hours a day? You, you, you know what I mean? Like a, square. Just crazy. Just, <laughs> man, your brain makes up the most wild things, reasons, and justifications uh -huh. for how messed up you are. Uh -huh. Okay. And I literally just told her, I said, you know, you know, I told her I got a hand job in Vancouver. It was like, 10 years ago. But for her, it was that moment. Yep. And she was like, you're out. We're done. And I was like, wait, come on. No, not that way. I told you, I'm honest. Yeah. She's like, dude, this is bullshit. I'm out. And I was like, I just lost my family. And that was the first time that I realized I did not have control over my life. Like it was, and, so, and now, now, I gotta say this because a lot of people feel like, you know, they say, "Well, pornography addiction is never listed in the list of addictions, and it's it's natural and this and that." But it was my issue. I couldn't stop. I wanted to stop. To me, that's a problem. You know, I know people, kids that eat, you know, paint chips, can't stop. Yeah, it's a problem. Yeah, you know, it may not be listed, right? But if you have the urge to grab that paint chip and eat it all the time. That's a problem. Yeah. I don't know what to tell you. For me, this was a problem. And I said, I got to do something about this. And I went to a rehab center, like for, for sex addiction, for pornography and the whole thing. And this is where all these famous people went. And, whole thing. and this thing, I was very successful. Mm -hmm. Because what happens is, is that I would feel guilty and then I would do a whole lot of great things to make up for that. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So you, you, it's very motivating. Like, let me get myself straight. No, you know yeah. what? I'm you not know what? that guy. Yeah. I'm going to do this. And it, and it was like, I, I, I say this. I say underachievement and overachievement, it's like, it comes from the same place. Like, if you're an underachiever, you live under a bridge. But an overachiever lives under a bridge he owns. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> he's built that thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. So now, no one can see me. Yeah. <laughs> you know? But the point is you gotta come out of freaking bridge. You gotta come out. You gotta just be you. And I was never me. I was always an image and this and that. And then it all fell. Like the image was even to my wife. She didn't even know who I was. You know what I mean? Well, that's what I'm wondering. It's like, how do you, do you just have to rebuild the whole relationship after everything, that? Everything, everything. But you're still mostly you. I mean, like she likes you. Right. She's but in love with you. There's this other Terry that she didn't know anything about. It was double life. That's what the whole thing is called. It's called a double life. And she liked this life, but this other thing was like, what are you doing? You know, and I had to be very, very honest about everything. Like I'm talking right to you right now, you yeah. know? And this took a, lot, it took a while. I mean, to a point where I can now just talk about my own, because now I'm one person, I can talk about these yeah. things. But when you're a double, you're like, oh no, but what's gonna be, what's everybody's gonna find out? Mm -hmm, um, this is the thing that changed it for me. And it wasn't religion or anything like that. It's what I found out what it did. Like, it changed the way I saw people. It, it literally, people became objects as opposed to actual real people. Um, and I didn't like that. Men and women? Everybody, it, just, just because the nature of porn is not, how, you know, how are you feeling? <laughs> it's 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 body parts. It's yeah. This it's engine pistons. Boom, damn, boom, damn. It's all about. I don't know what kind of porn you're watching. Yeah. <laughs> engines, <laughs> oh, engines and pistons. Well, yeah, God bless. It, it, well, I'm just saying, it's a lot of stuff. You know, what I mean? uh, and but, but but the thing is, is that I didn't like it. It changed me. And it, I, I didn't care about people. I always wonder about intervention with sex addiction. You know, that, right. that we've had so many comics, uh, you know, Louis C.K., Chris D'Elia, yeah. where it's like people doing stuff where it's like, okay, that's clearly illegal. Can the comedy community, community in any way, instead of just going, oh, that really sucks. Yeah. 
help, you know, like, cause there are definitely places you can go for help. And that stuff isn't even about sex. Like it's about power. It, yeah. It's about, yeah. it's about impulse too. Yeah, it's, it's about, about impulsivity. Like, it's a yeah. form of AD, or, uh, OCD or. Yeah. And, um, yeah. The, the excitement of doing something super creepy or right. some, yeah, some trauma you had as a child or it was done to you or whatever. But I, I do think that isolation of an individual is never helpful. I, I also think it's harder the more popular they are. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, Mulaney, it's Mulaney's, well, I'm not shocked that it worked, but talent level, money, John's got a lot of, John's a big star. Yeah. He, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, but like, he, he could have, Fuck, he could have fucked off. Yeah, yeah, that's true. No, 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 that is, no, so it's, uh, but I, th I think you just never know. You never know. And that's what the cool thing about intervention or people just giving it a shot, you know, saying, hey, um, would you want to get help or. I couldn't help notice you masturbating in front of me. Whoa. Is there something yeah. you'd like to do about <laughs> yeah. it? Yeah. Well. Probably the best time to intervene. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I, you know, and I, it doesn't happen as much for female comics, but I'm also, you know, I'm not for it when women comics like do stuff in yeah, the yeah, audience where not. it's like sexually, you know, bugging somebody without asking them. Yeah. And but, it, but you also see it's hard to fucking confront people. It, it is. It's oh, just yeah. hard to confront people. Again, success. But, it's just icky. <laughs> But if you're can, like, already, hey, can I involve myself in your emotional life? Yeah, I've been in, uh, I've been Overeaters Anonymous and then right. I've been in Debtors Anonymous for about 25 years. Um, and then I, uh, for briefly, about five years, I went to Sex and Love Addicts Anonymous because I had a lot of compulsive one night stands in the late 90s. That's right. Um, freeway entrance ramp motels, red roof in, the door doesn't lock everybody in. Um, like it was wild like that? Uh, it was just, lightly dangerous yeah. where I was like once a year I would go and and this is like something that's an addictive thing where you go in your act when you talk about being single and then kind of feel out the room like you know that's I think I definitely did that as a younger comic where I'd go I'm single can you believe it <laughs> and then you're at a nightclub so then afterwards right. some dude's gonna hang around and go right can't believe you're single. <laughs> and then you're like, what? Me? Well, how Me? did you know? Yeah. <laughs> Who told you? Oh. Yeah. You're a so, wise one, huh? Yeah. So, and that... Uh, I mean, again, this is all weird cult language, but it was helpful to me. They said that that can be a kind of like, it's intriguing where you're not really doing true intimacy. You're just setting out vibes. So saying I'm available, but you're not really available at all. You know, like, so at least that How did you get available? Well, so what, and this is what I chose for my I told my sponsor. I've been told I'm very available and not available. I I've like literally gotten both notes. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Well, I I did uh, get a dating plan where they said uh, anybody you go on a date with, you have to go on six dates with them and you have to be dating other people at the same time. I mean, if, if that's possible, but like you don't just zero in on one person and you that one, it's one date a week. So you've got to spread things out over time so it isn't this, uh, at least- Like you used to yeah, with I'd your legs. Yeah, I jumped, whoa, whoa Neil. You I used to do stand-up comedy. You weren't there. Um, <laughs> I always did it through the butt. Um, anyways, yeah, so then- Yeah, no, I've slow, heard that stuff. Like it's all, up, it's, yeah. you act, it seems like, I mean, in SLAW, Sex and Love Addicts Anonymous, they kind of give you methods to yeah. work with yourself. And also seeing your part in it, like, I never really thought of myself as um, as a predator, but I was like, oh shit. Like meeting the people in the groups and that half of it's dudes and the guys would cry talking about, you know, one night stands they had. And I'm like, oh, I didn't know that. I didn't know you felt bad about it. Like, I was like, yeah. like that was really surprising to were me. You, do you think that the people that you were hooking up with were also addicts? I don't know, but I did have people who I think I really hurt their feelings, where I was just like very cold, but believed that bullshit, 
you know, male, female, female stereotype of like, guys just, they just love it. And it's like, you know, <laughs> women, you know, women, once you have sex with them, man, you know, they just can't leave you alone. And I, you know, I was the opposite. I was right. just like, yeah, see ya, which is gross too. I mean, they're all, right. it's all gross, but, um, or it's great. If that's what you've agreed to, if you love polyamory and all that stuff, then that's awesome. But I think the thoughtfulness about it of having some, uh, self-reflection of like why yeah of like am I really being um available yeah the availability thing because it's really uncomfortable to me to actually have relationships even fr- you know friendships they're hard it's embarrassing and I have a hard time kind of negotiating or navigating them yeah and people, hard. If they people get their feelings hurt and I get my feelings hurt. Yeah, no, totally. Constantly. Yeah, constantly. It's all so that's what I really liked about it. I then I eventually I think yeah, I was dating for a while and I I did meet my husband, but I was dating other people and um and he was the first person who was just like he knew I had mental illness and he was like, my dad, my, not, my mom had bipolar and, you know, she went to the hospital. He said to me, you know, I'll come in, I'll shave your beard if you grow a beard. <laughs> I was like, that is the most fucking romantic thing yeah. I've ever heard in my life. How bad did the sex addiction, was there a bottom of the sex addiction or was there? You know, you, when you're using sex, like you're using any other drug, when you're using it, and it's not just with other people. I mean, most of my stuff was with pornography and these hours of edging and jerking off and numbing yourself. I mean, you're doing it for the wrong reason. Uh, the bottom is basically that you're just languishing in this place where there's no connection with people. Uh, there's no, it's always, like I realize, I, it's funny, there, there's an example, like what sex addiction is this. Dr. Drew had a show. He did all the alcohol shows, but yeah. he's talking about sex addiction. And there was a drummer, and I don't remember what band he was from, but he said that he was in this rehab and he, and he he for sex, and he goes, you know, the last time I spoke to my mother, I rushed her off the phone so I could masturbate, and she died. And that was the last conversation he ever had with his mother. But he didn't know, but he just wanted to get back yeah. to jerking off. And I thought that's what sex addiction is. That's what it is. It's not always the things you read about or that you hear about on the news or guys getting busted with prostitutes or all of these. It's it's the way that you, you shortchange people in your life, the moments you lose with people that you never realize, like the, the hours and the years you waste with people who don't care about you, who you don't care about, uh, the risk you put your partner at you know this it is weird that that to me summed up what what addiction is though it's like you you rush your mother off the phone so you can just right. get back to jerking your off your priority is the last just time getting ever... to that weird yeah state yeah instead yeah. of just like a good having a nice conversation with your mother yeah. and i thought i've never stopped thinking about that weird little moment uh and i've gone to meetings for sex addiction um which helped tremendously i mean i, I still have a sponsor um, and he always says, go make memories with your wife. Go make memories with Nikki. Like, and I think about that a lot. Like, I love looking back at our old photos and videos. And I'm like, yeah, I'm, this is what I'm doing. I'm making memories with my wife. This is better than anything sexual I'm going to do. But I still fall into the porn sometimes. Do you have a, like, a limit? Like, do you have a rules? Do you have rules for yourself? No, because again, I know I'm just going to, I'm looking at different things and then one will hit me. It's like just, you know what I mean? That little search you do on porn, all of a sudden you find the one and you lock in. It, 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 it's, it's, yeah. it's in the atmosphere. It's in the air. Just lo- it's like a joke. You, you, you're searching and it, you're reaching for it without looking. And then there it is and you have it. And that's the wording. That's how it is with porn. You, you, I'm looking through this one and that one and that one. I look at a lot of escort websites uh, in England of girls I'm never going to see. Um, so funny. I mean, yeah. it's so funny that like, somehow you were like let's check england i do yeah and there's some great uh <laughs> great uh <laughs> trans sex workers in england but i i just look and i'm never going to go and do it. it also is kind of safer because i know they're not people right. who i can access yeah. i can just look at the pictures and the things they write and you're relying on your cheapness to kick and be like well i'm not flying exactly anywhere. how many miles do i have on america <laughs> <laughs> hey did you like that did you like that yeah did you like it though you want more don't want to work would rather watch videos of me grab ass with people first of all go up here to subscribe and then go up here to uh watch more clips this is like when the weatherman says that there's a high pressure system coming in a little i'm not really used to the green screen